My name is Steven Christian. I'm a medical student. I'm a STEM educator and I'm a visual artist. So many of you don't know, but I was a big Plan Guard fan and I really love Yu-Gi-Oh! And so being in the AR space, I f it just dawned on me that Yu-Gi-Oh! was an AR card game. And so what better way to tap in with my roots as a kid than to make a course on how to augment playing cards so that others can have that experience. And so in this course, we're going through how to learn how to augment a playing card, like one of my favorite anime shows growing up, Yu-Gi-Oh! And this course will teach you the process I use to create immersive experiences with playing cards that you can apply to your art making process and your own personal projects. And so if you want to learn more about it, check it out at stuckonisland.com slash courses, or it'll be available on Skillshare. Before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to let you know about some things. As you know, I make a lot of this stuff available for free so that you can learn and level up your skill set, you know, at a very low cost. But there are ways for you to support me. First and foremost, I'm on Skillshare. And so go to Skillshare.com slash stuck on an island and follow me and check out some of my courses that I have there. I have all the courses you see on my YouTube channel and many more. You can also support me on Patreon at Patreon.com slash Iltopia. Here you could have subscriptions that are monthly or yearly and you get access to my Discord group and a lot of sneak peeks of things that are coming out soon from comics to new courses. You have a variety of tiers and stuff that you could support, so definitely check it out. You could go to shop.iltopia.com and it'll take you to this wonderful page that allows you to check out all my books, coloring books, augmented reality experiences, plushies, toys, and many more. This allows you to support my work and any of the stuff that I produce and put out there. All the proceeds go to funding all these projects that I release out for free on the internet, as well as paying for medical school. Because as you know, I'm a medical student as well. Last but not least, follow me on all the social nets. Okay, so welcome to Augmented Playing Cards, where we're going to create an augmented reality playing card, very much like one of my favorite anime shows. And this course is for intermediate creators. Uh, it's not mandatory, but the only thing that you really need to have an understanding of or a basic foundation of is the Unity game engine, which we'll be using for this. And so this is for intermediate creators that have used Unity before and have an understanding of how to create and, and navigate some of the tools, but it's really easy to follow along. And so if this is your first time, uh, take the time listen and look at the, the steps carefully and then uh, give it a shot yourself. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be tapping into one of my favorite anime shows, which is Yu-Gi-Oh! And so Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, that was that was my jam. That was that was the thing that I really enjoyed every Saturday. I collect the cards. I play the video games, all types of stuff. And I loved it because, you know, it it was so immersive you know the monsters the heart of the cards everything about it it really made me feel connected to the series uh, more importantly it it was just a big inspiration for me uh, because as I really look back at it this was augmented reality you know you had physical cards that you collected and played with and then when you played them the cards came to life and in many ways Yu-Gi-Oh was AR it was an anime about augmented reality. Uh, it was centered around a card game called Duel Masters and players play with a deck of cards full of monsters to defeat other players in battle. And when a player played a card, that card would come to life and it would actually have physical real world ramifications for other players. To where if their monsters took damage, then they took damage. And it, it was really interesting. And so with that reference, right? Uh, the agenda for this course is really about making an augmented reality playing card. Based off of my favorite anime. 
We're going to plan the augmented experience. We're going to rig the model with Mixamo. We're going to download animation files from Mixamo. We're going to set up our Unity project, import Vuforia engine for AR, set up image targets, import our rig model, create a UI for our playing card, add some animation, add some visual effects, and add some sound. And so at the end, we'll have something really, really fun and innovative and very reminiscent of Yu-Gi-Oh! And so the tools you'll need for this obviously are a computer or a Mac. You won't be able to do this with an iPad or a Chromebook. You'll need the internet. You'll need either a printed or digital image, you know, preferably a, a card. And then we'll have the Unity game engine and we'll have the Vuforia engine. And obviously, you know, either a webcam or a mobile phone. We will be testing this out with the webcam, but if you know how to build to a mobile phone, then that's great as well. And so without further ado, let's augment our playing card, which is creating an augmented rally playing card like in Yu-Gi-Oh! So the first step is that we're going to build a roadmap. What that means is that we're going to create a list of features that we want to include into our AR experience. And so the main purpose of this is putting down a plan so that we know what we're striving for. It allows us to narrow our vision so that we optimize our time. And it gives us the opportunity to use the scientific method of, you know, hypothesizing what if, right? And so if you can think it, then you can do it. And so the first part is actually thinking and putting it down so that you could do that and do that in the future. And so here's going to be a list of references that I have from Yu-Gi-Oh that I will be using to create my AR experience. And so the ideas that I have from this video are many of the ideas that I want to include in my augmented reality experience. Soul card? The Dark Magician! Ah. Huh? Then I play Dark Magician in attack mode. I move him forward five spaces to defend our other warriors. Cool. The creature with the greatest attack power in my hand is the Dark Magician. Dark Magic Attack! Yes! The Dark Magician! This card would definitely be powerful enough to defeat Harpy's pet dragon. I'll lay one card face down and then throw Dark Magician in defense mode! That ends my turn. True. You'll also know it's my favorite, and it's one of my most powerful cards. Dark Magician, attack mode! Oh. And so what you saw was a variety of different things, right? We saw summoning, we saw attacks, we saw life points, we saw uh, user interfaces, we saw uh, animation, all those different things. And so this gave me a whole bunch of different ideas to include in my AR experience. And so all I need to do is actually make a roadmap for it. And so I have a Google document up right now. And what I'll do with the Google document is I'm going to just jot down all the different ideas that I have and I'll organize them in bullet point lists. And so first I'll say I have animation I'll have user interface visual effects and sounds and so for animations or actually I'll, I'll back up and I'll say just sort of main goals and then key assets so main goals and key assets are going to be the two categories so key assets are items to include based on AR features and this is what the AR experience 
will be like. Okay, so I have um, what the air experience will be like. And so that's really focusing on what do you think when somebody plays with it or uses it, what will they have? So first and foremost, uh, when the player plays the card in front of the camera, it will come to life. And we'll say with that, there will be a summoning and information with the monster appearing of the card. And so that was one of the things that we saw is that uh, the monster appeared out of the card and it was revealed. Uh, and so that's that's one thing that we could do. And so what I'll do is I will go here and say uh, summoning animation. Another thing that we have is there's a You know, the player has a user interface with their name, the name of the monster, the attack and defense power. attack mode and defense mode a summon button and with draw button And, and I believe that's it. Yeah. And then they have sounds for all the different features. And so for the user interface, we'll say we have uh, buttons for each different thing. So we have attack, defense, summon with draw, and then text information and then for our animations we'll have attack defense withdraw and then for the visual effects we'll have attack fireball We have summon particles. Yeah, summon particles and attack fireball. And then for the sounds, we'll have a summoning sound, a attack sound. And 
We'll say a withdraw sound. And then the player. Presses the attack button. It pulls up a menu. And so we could say that there is, we could add that there's a, like a main menu. And that main menu is going to have all these things that they'll be able to play with. So when the player presses the attack button, it, it pulls up a, a menu for attacks. To select. Like that. And so it looks like we have a roadmap here. You know, really just the main goals are what the experience is going to be like. And then uh, from those main goals, you have some uh, key items to include. And so this is this is what we have now. And so let's go ahead and start putting it all together. So the next thing that we'll have is we need to get a model and we'll use Mixamo to rig that 3D model. And then we'll use that for some animation. So it's a pretty simple process and we'll use a great service for that. That is free. Okay, so we're at this service called Mixamo. And you can find it at Mixamo.com. And what Mixamo does is it, it's a library of animations and 3D models that is uh, done with Adobe that allows you to uh, get really some quick uh, 3D animated stuff. And so you could use it for games, for films, for AR experiences like we're doing. And it's a and it's a really good service. So I highly recommend you checking it out and checking out all the stuff that it has. And so with it, you can sign up for an account or you can uh, if you have an Adobe account, you already have an account. And so for me, I have an Adobe account, so I'll just log in. And when I do that, I have my basic user interface right here, which on the right, I have the model that I have selected. And then on the left, I have a whole bunch of different animations. So if you don't have an animated model, you could go to characters and you have hundreds of characters that you could select from. And they're really, really cool. You know, I could go Ybot, I could go Bryce. I can choose a lot of different things. I could choose Michelle. So it's a, so it's a really good, it's a really good service that you could use. And then on the animations tab, there's a whole bunch of different animations that you could select too. And all you got to do is just choose it. You could search it and then you could select it. And there's dances, there's poses, there's a lot of different movement from sports and, and fighting and video games and uh, a whole bunch of different things. And so uh, I highly, definitely highly recommend you uh, checking it out. But what we're going to do is what I'm going to do is actually get this character right here and I'm going to upload a, a character that I have. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this folder that I have and I have a dark magician FBX. Again, I'm a big Yu-Gi-Oh fan, so I wanted to create a dark magician. And so with that, I'll drag the FBX into this right here. And what it'll do is it'll automatically rig the character and take you through a little bit of a, a wizard to, to do that. And so sometimes they will actually just automatically rig the character for you. Uh, but if it doesn't, then it'll give you a, um, a tutorial on how to do that using their interface. And it's a pretty good rig. I I'll have to say it's, Compared to having to rig your characters manually, this is a, a lot easier and a lot uh, a lot more manageable. 
And so with that, it looks like I have the character model rigged already like that. And so I'll go ahead and click next and I have my character right there. So you can see that the character's moving. You can have them do a dance. Do some breakdance stuff. Angry. Straff. Like that. And so what we'll want to do right now is we'll just want to, uh, after we rig the character, we'll put him in a T-pose. And in that T-pose, we'll just go by searching T-pose. We'll put him in a T-pose. And what this does is it allows us to add it to Unity. And so we could change the posture if we want. Change the overdrive if you want. But then we'll go ahead and just download it. And we'll download it with the skin and we'll download it as a FBX for Unity. And I'll do it at 24 frames per second because that's what I'll be animating at. No frame reduction, we'll just click download. And so now what I'll do is I'll go to my Yu-Gi-Oh models and I'll just say Dark Magician T-Pose. And I'll just click save. Now that we have our actual model downloaded with the rig in the T-Pose, let's actually download some animation files from Mixamo to add to our AR experience. And so when we, after we download them, we'll search and download a, a list of animations and then we will use those to add to our experience in Unity. And so if we go back to our uh, roadmap that we have, uh, we already have our model. And so what we want and what we need is we need something for a summoning animation, an attack animation, something for a defense, and a withdraw. And so essentially four different animation files that we could use. And so what I'll go here to Mixamo, and what I'll do is I'll look for the uh, attack animation first. And so I'll just look for spell. And there's a lot of different ones that I could choose from. And so all I could do is, all I really need to do is I need to have uh, really just going around and searching for, searching for uh, different ones to choose from. And so I like this magic spell casting one. And, uh, and so I could just go ahead and download this. And so what I'll do is I'll click download and I have FBX for Unity. Uh, I want to do this without the skin. And that's because we already have a model with the skin on it. And so I want to do it without the skin. And then I'll go through, have it 24 frames per second, and I'll just click download. And so Dark Magician has spellcasting FBX, I'll click save. And so then I could do a defense one. So let's type in defense. or I'll have, I'll say block. And so I like, I like this one. This one looks cool. And so I'll have this one as my, my defense one. And so I'll go ahead and click download. Again, FBX for Unity without the skin. And 24 frames per second, I'll click download. Click save for that. 
then I'll click I have one for my summoning so I'll just type in enter or I'll do jump I'll just say, uh, let's say summon. Yeah, yeah, I'll use this one. Oh, this one looks cool. So I'll have a, I'll have a summon. So I'll just spell casting. The one that I like for that one and then I want a withdraw actually I'll probably just animate that in unity for the withdraw and the summon uh, but what I need is probably an idle that's just if they're sort of standing there And so looking for an idle pose, I'll just look for we'll just say no. Yeah, I'll just go back to this orc one. This one looks pretty decent. Yeah, like that. So I'll go ahead, download it. Again, FPX for Unity without skin, and we'll have this at 24 frames. And then I'll go to Yu-Gi-Oh card, and I'll have this be my Dark Magician Idol. I'll save that and we have our animations. Now it's time to set up the Unity game engine. And we're going to do this for our AR experience. And so it's pretty, pretty popular game engine, but uh, nevertheless, we just got to gotta install it and, and get it all set up for us. And so here we are with the Unity game engine. Uh, if you've never been to unity.com, make sure to head there. Uh, and this is where you're able to get it. So you just click get started and then it'll take you to the teams panel, but you actually go to the individual panel here and we'll use a personal account. And so we'll just download a free personal account. So get started. And after that, it'll say first time user or returning user. You just click get uh, start here and click download and it'll download the Unity Hub for you. And so after you do that, We'll open up our Unity Hub. And in the Unity Hub, this is where we get all of our, uh, you know, project files and stuff. So in the Projects tab, this is where you start your first project. In the Unity Learn tab, this is where you learn how to create or learn how to use the Unity Game Engine. And there's project files and different tutorials. Community tab is where you can look up blogs and forums for uh, the stuff that the community of uh, Unity users uses. 
and then installs is where you download all the unity editor installs and so you go to add and highly recommend the recommended release I already have that downloaded but I uh, choose a recommended release you go to next and then you make sure all the different tools are available so visual studio android build support and ios build support are selected and you'll click next and then you agree to the terms you agree to the other terms and then you click done and it'll save it and start downloading and installing everything i already have it installed so i'm not going to download it again and then after that you go to the projects tab and you'll go to new you'll start a new project make sure it's a 3d template instead of all the other templates use a 3d template and then i'll call this ar playing card tutorial i'll just give it a name and then we'll click create And so now that we have our Unity game engine open, uh, the first thing that we want to do is obviously go to build settings and then we'll change the platform to Android. You could change it to iOS, but Android is what I use because I have a PC. And so I'll go ahead and switch platform. And you can always change it later. Uh, and so as long as it's a mobile platform, we're good. And then we'll go to player settings and I'll just dock the player settings to the side here right next to the inspector and I'll go down uh, color space gamma that's good we could use that and then we'll go to quality and we'll move that to medium medium quality so that it, it's optimized for any sort of mobile experiences because AR experiences are mobile experiences and so we want to make sure that they're optimized for that and so after we have that uh, a little brief rundown is we have the inspector which has all our settings in it so we have our game objects in the hierarchy that's in our scene our scene is the viewport uh, the game view is the view that the camera sees uh, and the inspector has all of our components for each game object and so you could add different components to it to uh, to enhance the game objects and then when you right click or you click this plus sign that's how you add different game objects to the scene here is the projects tab so you could add different uh you know different files to the projects tab and this is where all your files exist and then the console is where all your errors and, and information exists and then we have the uh, asset store and we have the package manager which we'll look at later and so after that we are ready to add our ar sdk so now what we're going to do is we're going to install the vuforia engine sdk and this is for Unity to support AR features, specifically for a webcam. And so you can build to a device using uh, Vuforia or any other SDK. There's AR Foundation out there, there's Easy AR, there's a lot of different ones, but I use Vuforia because it works well with the webcam and it's uh, the easiest way that I've found to do uh, like image tracking with AR uh, without having too many hassles. And so what we'll do is we'll start with that. And so I'm at the portal for Vuforia Engine, and this is where I'm able to uh, download the Vuforia SDK. So I'll just go to Downloads, and I want to choose the uh, Add to Unity Project. And so I'll first just add my uh, login information. So you'll need an account, but it's free to sign up for an account. And after that, I'll download the package into my folder for my projects. And then I'll go back to Unity, and I'll go to Assets import package custom package and i'll go over to my uh, folder where i downloaded it and here's my vuforia sdk so i'll just click import i'll click update okay so to see if we have it actually installed, we'll go to Window and Move for your Configuration, and we have it installed. And so the first thing you'll want to do is we'll add a license. So click the Add License button, and it'll take you to all the different licenses that you have, so the License Manager. The Buy Deployment key is for you to go online and uh, essentially get, a, get this onto an App Store, but a Development key is if you're not going to use it on an App Store. And so that's the, the beauty of the two. 
And so with the development key, we'll go through, create a new development key. We'll call this AR playing card like that. And then I'll click check mark and I'll click confirm. And then in the AR playing card, I'll go through and I will get my license key. I'll just copy it by clicking the, the numbers and I'll go here and I'll just paste it in here. And it's a long key, so don't try to don't try to type it and just uh, copy and paste it. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll go down to track device pose and I'll turn that off because that says that uh, if the camera's not looking at the, the target uh, with track device pose on, it'll still play the target. Uh, it'll play the AR experience, but we don't want that. We only want the uh, we only want the AR experience to play when the target is being shown on the camera. So if it's not shown on the camera, we don't want it to play. And so we'll turn that off to turn off that feature. And then for the webcam, we want to make sure that play mode is set to webcam and then uh, choose the right webcam that you have. And so now that we have that done, we're ready to set up our image target. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create an AR image target uh, based off of our playing card that we have. And so go ahead, grab a playing card, print it out, put it on your phone, do whatever you need to do. Uh, but then we're going to use it as a way to uh, bring about our AR experience. And so let's go ahead and do that. So back in Unity, right, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a new folder, and I'll call this Images. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my card, my playing card to it. So I have a Dark Magician card here. I'll just drag and drop that down here. And then from there, I'll select it, go to my inspector, and I'll change the texture type to from default to Sprite 2D and UI. And I'll click Apply. And then from there, what I'll do is I'll create a new scene. So I'll go to my Scenes folder, and I'll right-click, Create, and go to Scene. And I'll change the scene to AR Playing Card like that and then I will double click it to get inside of it and so now time to build out our AR environment and so we'll go ahead and go to Vuforia engine so right click Vuforia engine and then AR camera and with the AR camera this is supposed to mimic our mo our phone or our webcam so then we'll delete the other camera because we shouldn't have two cameras in there and then right click Vuforia engine and we go to image target and the image target is where we have it so I'll call this AR playing I'll call this dark magician dark magician card like that and so with it I'm going to go to select the dark magician card go to image target behavior and we're going to change this to select and change the image texture to the dark magician and so when I double click on it, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to see my Dark Magician card right here. Just like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, uh, we're going to test this out. And so in order to do that, I'll right click and I'll add a cube just to test out the features. And this is really big, so I'm going to scale it down. So we'll have a cube here and we'll have the cube essentially covering the face of the dark magician so we know that the if the cube appears then it's covering the dark magician that's what we want and we want to make sure that the cube is a child of the dark uh, magician card so we'll just drag it over so that it's a a child of the dark magician card right there so we make the cube a child of the dark magician card and so anything that's a child of this game object that has the image tracking image target behavior that is going to instantiate stuff and so uh, then we'll go ahead and save and then we're going to go ahead and test it out and so what i have here is i actually have my phone with the image target on it i didn't print it out i have it on my phone and so you can see it like this right so when i turn it around over there boom just like that. So if I turn off the cube, you'll see 
that it exists like that. Perfect. And so for my game view, there's a couple of things that I should do before we uh, finish. And one of them is I'm going to change the, uh, the aspect ratio to uh, 1920 by 1080 landscape. And then I'll also have maximize on play so I could get a full screen view. And so now what I could do is I could test it out again. And this time I'll test it out in full view. So there we go. Much better view. And so I'm going to increase the brightness on my phone so that you can see it. And actually, I might want to decrease the brightness on my phone so that you can see it. Like that. So there's a little bit of a glare, but for the most part, we're good. And so finding that balance is always key. Perfect. And so now it's time to create a UI for our playing card. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build a user interface for the player to control the augmented card. And so if we go back to our roadmap that we had, we wanted to have a user interface that had sort of a main menu and then a attack a defense, a summon, withdraw, and then some text information. And so what we'll do is we'll actually create that. And so first things first is we'll be in our, in our scene right here in Unity. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the user interface, right click on the scene. And we're going to create a canvas. So we'll create a canvas by going to UI and then canvas. And we'll call this UI canvas. And there's some things that we need to uh, cover before we get started with this. So first and foremost, the way the canvas works is that if you double click on it, it's a lot bigger than the other thing. And so we'll have that like that. It's definitely a lot bigger than our, our image right here. So don't worry too much about that. And so what we need to worry about is in the canvas, we'll go to, uh, we'll have this at canvas overlay and we'll have the sort order be one so that it renders over everything else. And then constant pixel size, we'll do a scale with screen size and we'll say 1920 by 1080 like that. And then what we'll do is we'll change this to 0.5. And so all this says is that uh, as it gets wider, it gets bigger at the same uh, ratio. If it's not 0.5 and it's like this, then it'll, it'll skew it a little bit differently. So now that we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to add, um, we're going to add some buttons and stuff. And so before we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to windows package manager, and we're going to go to unity registry and we're going to download text mesh pro. And so if you don't have it installed already, download text mesh pro. And this is so that we can uh, add some text. And then under the canvas, what we're going to do is we're going to go to UI. I want to say image. I want to select an image right there. And we'll, we'll call this image uh, name. like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the nameplate be at the top right. And then we're just going to use the rec tool and we're just going to extend it out and extend it down like that. And so we could have a source as a sprite image and we could change the color and stuff like that. So we could have it be, you know, a sprite image with the color of 
you know, like a dark, you know, gray, and it could be semi-transparent like that. And so with that nameplate, what I'll do is I'll create uh, some text. So I'll go to UI text, text mesh pro, and I'll have to import the essentials. And then I'll have to import the examples as well. And what I'll do is I'll call this, um, I'll call this name like that. And I'll just go ahead and make it, I'll move it around. So I'll move it up and then I'll increase it to a larger size. And I'll just use the rec tool to uh, make it larger. And I'll call it Dark Magician. And I could do audio size if I want. And then I could set this to a bold text. And I can make it make it um centered and so now that i have that nameplate i could actually add a couple of more and so i'll add another text so i could just duplicate this one and i could lower it down and this one is going to be attack power and I'll have the attack power be 2500 because that's what the attack power is for the dark magician and I'll just make the rec tool I'll make the rec tool smaller and I'll just put it in this sort of space here so the lower quadrant and what I'll do is I'll duplicate it and I'll do defense power And I'll just move this over to the side. And the defense power is 2100. So I have my Dark Magician, attack power, defense power, boom. Just like that. And so that's my nameplate right there. So I'll go ahead and click save. And that's my nameplate. The next thing that I'm going to do is if we go back to our thing so we have user interface we have the we have this here so we have some text information and so now it's time to actually add some buttons for the attack defense summon and withdraw so i'll go back to unity and what i'll do is i'll create a empty object and this is going to be an empty object for the buttons. And so I'll say uh, menu buttons like that. And I can add the menu buttons like down in this corner here. And so in order to do that, what I'll do is I'll just create an image just as a placeholder. And so I'll move it down. What I'll say is that the menu buttons can be uh, parented to the bottom like that. And then I will just make it cover this area like that. So if I go here, I could have the image and I could have it stretch. And I'll just call this background. And so the next thing I could do is I'll create another empty and I'll have these become toggles. So toggles. 
And what the toggles will do is I'll be able to create a toggle. So right click and I'll go to toggle, boom. And what the toggles allow me to do is uh, toggle from one thing to another. And so I'll say, uh, I'll have one for summon. Cause that's the first one. And I'll go ahead and just modify it a little bit. So with the toggle, I have my, my label. So I can just get rid of the label cause we don't want that label. We might actually make a, a better one. And then I'll make the toggle button just a little bit bigger. I could go to the width and I'll be 150. And then the height will be 150 as well. And then the check mark, I'll have the check mark be, instead of a check mark, I'll just have it be a knob like that. And it'll be a black knob. And I will have it scale the whole thing. And I'll actually just make it a little, you know, I'll make it lighter like that. Mm. Actually, I'll just make it an overlay. Might as well just make it an overlay. And so what I'll do here is I'll right click on the sum background and I'll add a text mesh pro text. And that text mesh pro text, I will make that within the bounds. So I'll just stretch like that. And then I'll just take the bounds out. See. I'll give it a little bit of room, local room like that. Like that. So now we have our text mesh pro. And so I'll just click zero, 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 zero for all these. And then I'll just move this around. So this is what we got for this. It's 150, 150, 150. And we have our text here. We have it there. There we go. And then we'll place that in there. And we'll just give it some room. So now we'll call it summon. I'll just let it fit. So we have summon like that. And so what I'll do is just have that be the summon. And I'll call it just the summon toggle like that. So I have my summon toggle and so I could move it around. And so the next thing I'll do is I'll duplicate it. And then I'll have this say battle toggle. And the battle toggle will be over here. And I'll change the name to battle. Just like that. So now that I have the two toggles, what I could do is I could go through and create a new empty object. And I'll create that outside of it. And I'll label it summons. And then I'll make another one. So I'll just duplicate it. And I'll call this one battle btns and then summon btns like that 
So we have toggles, battle buttons, and summon, summon buttons. And then we have our background. And so with these, one of them that we could do is we could create a new button and this will be the button for Text Mesh Pro. And so we'll add a Text Mesh Pro button. And this one we could call Summon BTN. And so with this one, what I'll do is I'll go through, I'll call it Summon Monster. And I'll change the, the button I'll just increase the button like that and then I'll move the button over to here and so when we have the color pressed so it's a normal color right now we'll have it pressed we'll have it be a highlight color of red and then we'll say like a yellow color for when it's pressed and then also like a darker yellow color for when it's selected like that. And so now what I could do is I could duplicate it and move it over. And I'll call this one a withdraw button. So withdraw BTN. And then I'll change it to withdraw monster. Like that. And so what I'll do is I'll change the color. I'll change the color to, we'll say a green for both of these. Like that. So now I have the button for withdraw and for summon monster. And what I could do is I could actually move the toggles over a little bit. So I'll move my toggles over. So this is my toggle for that and then I'll move this toggle over to here and so now that I have my summons buttons done I can actually duplicate my summoning button and I'll add it to my withdraw buttons and I'll call this attack button and so I'll move it over What I'll do is I'll just make these a little tighter, have these a little more evenly spaced, just like that. And then my attack button, I'll change it from summon monster to dark magic attack. So that's its, uh, that's his attack, dark magic attack. So I'll just have it be that attack button for that. And then I'll duplicate it again, and this will be defense mode. And I'll move this over, and this will be called defense mode. I'll just actually have my toggle be centered here. Boom. This toggle be centered here, yeah, and then not dark magic attack, but we'll have this be defense mode. Defense mode like that. And so now I have my defense mode, my attack, uh, my attack button, my defense mode button, my withdraw button, my summon monster button. So we have the buttons here, and so now what I need to do is I need to have it uh, have it be a toggle. So what I'll do is I'll have the toggles be a group. So I'll just rename this group like that. And before I actually do that, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and change the colors of these. So I'll have this one, since it's attack, I'll have it be red for both. Like that. And then for defense, I'll have that be blue. I'll just have that be blue. And I'll have that be blue. Like that. Perfect. 
So now what we could do is we could actually test out our, our user interface. And, and so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and test it. And all we're testing is see us if the buttons work. So hovering over, and then we'll select it. It's yellow, green, red, and blue, just like that. We have the Dark Magician text, 2500, 20, uh, 2100, and then we have our toggles here. And so we'll actually parent these toggles now. And so the way it will work is we have our buttons for our uh, summoning and for our battles. And so in the toggles, we'll actually create a toggle group. So toggle, type in toggle, and then have a toggle group. And with that toggle group, we'll go into each one of the different toggles and we'll just add that toggle group in there like that. So summon toggle and then for the battle toggle, we'll have that. And so what this does is it says that only one thing could be toggled on and off at the same time. And so you can't have two toggled on and off. So if one gets toggled on, the other one will toggle off. And so now what I'll do is I'll actually change the colors of these. So we'll have, uh, have a good indicator. So we'll have the battle be red or the summon. We'll have the summon be yellow. Yep. And so highlight pressed and then the summon will be yellow. And then when it's selected, we'll have it be like a darker yellow. And then for the battle toggle, we'll have that be, we'll have that be like a, like a pinkish. I'll just have a pinkish for all of it. Like that. And so now, one of the things I'll need to do is for each one of these, so I have the summon toggle and the battle toggle. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to parent the, the button containers that we have. So each one of these containers has buttons. And so we'll need to turn these buttons on and off every time we have the toggle summon or the toggle battle selected. And so what we'll do is I'll go to the, the, the battle toggle and I'll go to on value changed and it's a Boolean. And what it says is that when we drag the battle button on, we'll go to the functions. We'll say game object and we set set active as a dynamic bool. And the same thing will be for our summon toggle. Do the exact same thing. So go to the summon button and we'll go to function, game object, and set active. And so what that means is that only one is gonna be active at a time. And when you toggle it on, it'll turn on the summon. When you toggle the battle on, it'll turn on the battle. So what we'll do is we'll save it and then we'll click play. And so the summon is on, then the battle is on, like that. And so to make it a little bit better, what I'll do is I will uh, turn them both off. And so when I save it and I test it, I'll have both of them on. I'll select one, turns one on. Then select the other, turns the other one on, like that. And so there we go. We have our uh, user interface with two buttons or two toggles that turn things on and off. And with those two toggles, we have the withdraw and summon. And then we have the uh, battles for attack in our defense mode. And so if we go to our document, we have the withdraw button, we have the summon button, attack and defense, and we have our main menu. And we also have our text information, just like that. And so what we'll do is I'll just have these crossed off the list, the strike through like that, because we completed that. And so now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to import a model 
and the materials for it. And so using Unity and the stuff that we got from Mixima, we're going to import all the stuff that we got and we're going to add it to our experience. And so in Unity, what we're going to do is we're going to go to assets in our project panel and we're going to create a new folder and it's going to be 3D models. And in that 3D models panel, we're going to open it and I'm going to drag and drop the model that I had. And so I have the uh, Dark Magician model with the T-Pose. So I'll add that to it. And then what I'll do is I'll go in and I will make, uh, go into the inspector with the model selected and I'll go to rig. So you could have model, go to rig, and I'll change it to humanoid and I'll click apply. And then from there, there shouldn't really be any animation, so don't worry about that right now. But we'll have our materials, and so I'll go ahead and extract the materials. So I'll extract the materials. And first, before I do that, I'm actually going to go to the, uh, the 3D models, and I'll say uh, model materials. Like that. And so I'll create a model materials folder. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and extract those materials. So in my model materials folder, select that folder. And what it'll do is it'll put all my materials there. And so when we look at it, it's going to change all the materials like that. And so the next thing that I want to do is I want to actually in the model materials folder, I'll actually drag and drop all my Dark Magician materials that I have. So I have all these materials here in the red folder. So I'll just extract them or drag them into my folder here. And so it's going to add all the materials that I need. And then I need to go ahead and start trying to parent these. So with the face material, I'll, this is where my face material is right here. And so what I'll do is I'll just drag this face material over to the albedo. And if I go to my model, you should notice that there's a face on him now. It's no longer gray. So there's a face on him. Like that. And so I'll go back to my model materials and I'll say, okay, I have a face here. So now I have the material for the body. And so body material, I'll go ahead and add that to the albedo. For the body two, I'll go ahead and add that to, add the albedo to that. And same thing for these, I'll add the albedo for it. And then I have this, this true, I'll add this other texture, Turo 2, I'll add this texture. And then for the other, I'm going to add this texture. And with it, I also have an alpha mask that I could use. And so for each one of these, I'll go ahead and use this as a We'll say a metallic alpha. So I'll have the, the alpha be that. Or I'll have it be albedo alpha. Yeah, I'll have it be for the metallic. So then for the turo, metallic alpha. And I'll actually just change all these to albedo alpha. Mm. Yeah, metallic alpha probably looks better. And I'll just add this for each one of the, the alphas that I have. And the face doesn't have one, so I'll just go ahead and skip that. And then we'll go back to our model. 
we'll take a look at the model. And now the model has all the stuff that I want on it. Just like that. So there's a metallic and all that jazz that I could add to it. Uh, if I want to change the metallic on it, I'll just go through, change the metallic if I want, so I can make it flatter, as you can see there. And again, I'll change this to the alpha, so I can make it shiny or not. I'll just drop it down, drop the drop the shiny. So when I go to it, it's not as shiny, but it's still exactly what we want right there. Perfect. So I'll click save and what I could do is I could go through and add my AR content. So instead of having the actual, uh, having a cube here, I could add my model here and this model will be able to, uh, will be essentially the instantiation of the, of the monster on the card. And so with that, I'll just create an empty in my uh, my Dark Magician card game object, and I'll call this AR Content. I will double click on the AR Content, which is obviously my Dark Magician, my Dark Magician card right here. And so with it, I'll go ahead and hide that cube. So I have the cube here, I'll just hide it. And then I'll go to my 3D model and I'll add my 3D model to the AR content. And you can see it's really small, so I'll make sure it's at pivot and not center. And then I'll just increase it so that it, it lifts up. And then I'll zero it out. So zero, zero, zero. And so as you can see, we have our 3D model here. And so there's a couple of things that we want to change first. And first and foremost, look at that face. That face looks horrible. And so what we can do is we can modify the face so that it looks better. And then after that, we'll move on to doing some of the other stuff. So first we'll go to the face and we'll go to the face material. And you'll see that the face is upside down. So what we can do is we can right click on the face and we'll go show and explore. And I'll double click that to open up the face. And I'll just rotate it. 180 degrees and I'll just save it and so now it immediately changes right but you'll see that there's on the face there's actually different eye settings and so we can rotate between the different eye settings pretty easily by going to our face material and then we could scroll over till we get the face that we want so we'll say this one is 0.5 and 0 Perfect. So we have 0.5 and 0. So that is what we want for this. And so now what we could see is we have our, our staff here. And so our staff isn't actually connected to our hand the way we want it to. And so what I'll do is I'll have the staff here and I have it as an item. And so if I hide it, I can hide it to make sure that I know what the staff is. And so this is just a mesh right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add this to my hand. And so I'll go down to, in the hierarchy, I'll have uh, at the spine, and then I want it in my right arm. So I'll have the right arm, forearm, hand, and then right hand end. And so there's all these different game objects that you could use, right? Then I have bulk here, right? And so what I want is I want it to be attached to the, to the hand. So the item will be attached to the hand here, like that. So I can't do that instance of the prefab, so then I'll uh, unpack the prefab. So go to prefab, then unpack completely. And so then I'll be able to, I'll be able to modify it now. And so what I'll do is I'll take this item here and then I'll move it over to the end here like that. And so now that I have that, what I could do is I could rotate it. So I'll go through and rotate it. I'll probably have to rotate this one as well. Hmm. 
It's not, uh, it's not giving me the option to rotate. Wonder why. Wonder why. Okay, there we go, that's why. So what I'll do is I will go through with the item here and I'll rotate it out. Yep, it's not letting me do that. So right hand in is essentially the, the object that we have. So if I hide the right hand in, that's where it hides the stuff. So what I'll do is I'll right hand in, this is how I'm able to rotate it. And so I'll have it rotate like this. And so now it looks like it's uh looks like the staff is in the actual hand. Like that. So rotate it a little bit. Move it in just a little bit more. Doesn't have to be perfect, but perfect. Now I have my now I have my staff. And so now that I have that, what I can do is I could essentially use this as a use this as a uh, 3D model now. So now with everything that I have, I'll go through and I have my animator. I have everything that I need. Let's go ahead and test it now. So we'll click play. So with my dark magician. I have my Dark Magician coming out now. Just like that. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to import and add animation files to the characters that we are going to be controlling. And we're going to do that from the stuff that we got from Mixamo. And so we'll go ahead and get that started. So in this, right, we have our assets, we have our 3D models folder and what we'll do is we'll create a new folder called animation. Like that. And so now that we have our animation folder, what we could do is we could go ahead and in the animation folder, we'll go to our other models that we downloaded. So the spell casting, the orc idol, uh, the magic spell casting, the block idle, and those are the ones that we need. So those four, we'll just drag and drop. And you'll notice how there isn't an actual model here. And so what we'll need to do is we'll need to go select one of them. We'll go to rig, we'll go to humanoid. And then instead of creating from this model, what we'll do is we'll copy from another model. And we'll click this icon and we'll use the dark magician with the T pose. So when we do that, we're able to press this icon here, this arrow icon, and it opens it up. And here's our animation file here. Like that. And so this triangle is our animation file that we actually need. So what we could do is we could do the rest of those that we just downloaded. So go to humanoid, copy, from another model and then select that and click apply. So now each one of these has our animation file like that. We have the animation file here. We'll have our idle and so on and so forth like that. So now what we can do is we can start adding our animations to our character here. And so the first thing that we want to do is we want to actually right click create and we'll go and create an animator controller and we'll call this dark magician controller. And what we'll do is we'll go to the dark magician and where it says animation controller, we could click that and choose Dark Magician Controller right there. And so what this will do is it'll control, it'll allow for opportunities to control the animation assets that we have. 
And so what we'll do again is we'll go in and we'll go to animation. So window animation and choose the animator. And so we want to select that and we'll have an animator window that we have now. So this is our animator window. And so what I could do is I can actually have my projects tab on the side. Like that. Actually, I'll set, I'll select my project over here so that I have a little bit more room to work with. And then I'll have my animator like that, the projects window to the side like that. Perfect. And so having a, having a good window is always good. So I actually set the console. So there we go. Now I have more stuff to work with, more space. And so now what I could do is I could drag and drop each one of these. So I could actually right click, create empty state. And this empty state, what I'll call this empty state is idle. Then I'll create another empty state called defense. Let's see, defense. Whoops, so I'll have defense here. I'll have idle. Idle, defense, and then another empty state, and I'll call that one attack. Like that. And so what I can also do is I can take this idle state here, uh, the idle state, and I'll use the orc idle. And the attack, I want that to be the magic spell casting. So I'll do that. And in the defense, I'll have that be standing block idle right there. And so now that I have those, right? And I have my actual animation that I have, I'll go to the idle and I could just go ahead and preview it, make sure it's the right one. Yep. So I got this, this is my, the, the idle and I have my attack and I have my defense just like that. So what I could do is, uh, I have this other idle here that I can mix and match with it. And so I have this, not the standing block, but uh, just this regular spell casting. I can just drag and drop this over. And what I could do is I could have this be, uh, make a transition. So I'll go from there and then back to there. And so what I could have is I could have this transition. And so I'll have this be, you know, the speed be two, I wanna say. Or I'll say that the transition can work this way where I could have two idols and then I'll transition to this one. I'll delete this and then make a transition to this and then delete this, make a transition back to this. So what this is going to do is it's going to loop from this idol to this idol, then to the spell casting one and then back to the idol. Like that. So I'll just click one, click one for this. And what we could do is we could just check it out. So we'll save and I will try to play it. And so with my Dark Magician, I have that idle now. Just like that. So now that I have that, what I'll do is I will um, start connecting all the different icons to all the different animations 
to my uh, icons that I have. So I'll go back to these icons that I have, these buttons. So select in the canvas. What I have is I have my uh, attack buttons, the summoning, and the withdraw button and stuff. So what I could do is I could have this attack button here and in the attack button, I have the on click variable. And so I could choose this dark magician T pose, add that to it, go to animator, and then I'll say play string. And what I'll do is I'll have it say attack. And you want to make sure that the, the attack is the constant attack. So what it's going to do is as long as it's the right name, you could do that. And then after we do that attack, we want it to go back to this. So you want to make a transition to go back to it. And the same thing here, you want to make it go back to it. We'll have the attack there and then we'll do the same thing for this one, but we'll have it do defense. And so we'll just add dark magician there, animator, click the string, and then we'll put defense. And it's because we have this, uh, this right here is called defense. And so it's going to call this one or this one. And so what we could do is we could click save and we could play it and see if it works. So have it click battle attack. And he does that and then defense. Like that. But with it, I, I kind of want defense mode to just be defense mode. So what I'll do is I will actually just delete this and he'll stay in defense until he actually gets out of it. Until you actually like press something else. And so we got our attack mode, we got our defense mode, and now we will need to do some summoning. And with the summoning, I'll actually do that by creating a some new animation, actually. So I'll go to my Dark Magician, like that. And actually, what we'll do is we'll, we'll get some visual effects first. And then we'll start to create some uh, animation based off of that for the summoning and the withdrawal. And so let's actually do that. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to add some VFX, so some particles, some visual effects, and we're going to really make the animation pop. And we'll add that to our text. And then we'll also add that to the summoning and the withdrawal. And so let's go ahead and do that. So here, right, we have our, we have our attacks that we have our, uh, all the stuff that we need. We have our game objects with our battle and our dark magician. We have the different buttons that we need and we have some animations. And so now it's time to build off of that stuff. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually just get some visual effects. So what I'll do is I'll go to the asset store. And so search online, go to the asset store. And what I'm going to do is look up some VFX. So we'll say FX. So pretty much just look for an FX pack that we need. And so we have these cartoon effects here. I think these are pretty good. Um, we have simple mobile ready effects. Let's check this out. Uh, doesn't really give us much to go off of. Got pixel art effects. We got some projectile stuff we could do. Uh, so we have this uh, stylized effect pack right here. And I like this, you know, that circle there. We got some other little things that we could add. And so I'll add this. So I'll add this cartoon effects free. So 
And what I'll do is I'll import. And we'll import that in. Cool. And then what I'll do is I'll do some, look for some projectiles. So some projectile packs, see if there's any free ones available. Um, we got shooting sounds. We'll, we'll worry about that later. So we have a rocket with the a rocket tail. Yeah, so we could we could use this rocket, see if that works. That um let's see if there's any other FX pack. Uh Go to free assets or even assets that I purchased. We'll just go back to VFX. A VFX bundle. And I could actually just choose some of these. So uh, what I'll do is I'll actually choose this uh, VFX bundle as well. Uh, since I already have it, I'll just incorporate this into it and uh, and we'll utilize this as well. So if you have your own VFX packs, feel free to uh, incorporate your own VFX packs into this. Uh, download them, use what you need, and really find ways to just like bring this to life. And so I'll go ahead and import it. Okay, so now that I have the visual effects downloaded, what I'll do is I'll start trying to add those to my my stuff. So the first thing I want to do is because I have these associated with my content, what I'll do is I'll just create a new game object and I'll have this be VFX right there. So VFX for this. And then what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll look for some VFX that I have. So from my free asset pack, there's a whole bunch of prefabs that I have that I could use. Uh, miscellaneous ones, viruses, magical soul, poof, tornado. And I could look at the demo scene. So I'll just save. I'll save this and I'll open up the demo scene to see what is what I have available. And so what I'll do is I'll click play. And I could go through and check out all the different stuff that I could use. And so I'll just go through, see all the stuff that I want. And so I like this dark magic aura, that's cool. And this flying ember upper. Or fire shield, so dark magic aura. And then fire shield. And then magic aura runic. That looks cool. So the magic auras are good. And this light red direction circle, that looks good too.
Yeah. So if I could go here and I could just type in uh, auras. And then I have the dark magic, the magic aura, the aura bubble. So I have these auras here. And so I could go back to my other scene, the AR playing card scene. I'll just type in aura. And then with the aura selected, I could actually go through, go to AR content. And I'll just get rid of this right there. And I will actually add these auras and stuff to my AR content. And so dark magic aura. Uh, remember that I had the light one, the resurrection light. I had that one there too. So I like these two. And so what I could do is I could just shrink these down. So I'll shrink them down. Like that. And so these are the two, these are the two auras that I have. So I'll hide one of them. I click play. Boom. And then for the dark magic aura one, click play, I could do that. So what I could do is I could say withdraw could be the dark magic and then the other one could be the resurrection light could be the the summoning and so i have those and so what i'll do is i'll turn them off like that and so when i have my when i have my actual stuff playing what i could do is i could go through and i could create a animation timeline and I could animate these things, these assets in here. And so what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll say uh, sequencing right here and then timeline and I'll bring this down and I'll say create. Actually, I'll, I'll go through first and I'll say, I'll just create a timeline. So I'll go to my AR content and I'll create a new empty, say timeline. And with the timeline, I'll click create and I'll go into animation and I'll create a timeline. Change this frame rate to 24 frames per second, like that. And what I could do is I'll go through and I'll say, I want this to happen here. So I want to add this. So animation track for my dark magician. And then I want to create a resurrection light and I'll have this be actually I'll create a control track and then I'll bring down the resurrection light like that. So now resurrection light happens like that. And then I'll have my my animation uh, animate in and so I'll just click animate and I'll have its end like this so I'll have my dark magician I'll add a key for the rotation and the position and the scale like that and then what I'll do is I'll have it actually rotate in so I'll have them rotate in like this. It rotates in. And then I'll also have it uh, scale down like that. So now he rotates in. And what I could do is I could over rotate him like that. And I can make him a little bigger. And it seems like it didn't rotate the way I wanted it to. So I'll have it go like that. So I'll just undo those. So 
So I'll have this. So I'll have it like that. Then I'll rotate it and have them get bigger and then come back like that. So that is it right there. And so what I'll do is I'll have this be at hold like that. And that is my animation right there. So what I could do is I could have this actually get connected to my my summon button. So the summon button that I have, I click on click, I'll add this timeline to it, and I'll just click play. Like that. And so now what we could do is we could test it. And so what I'll do is I'll say, I'll want my Dark Magician actually off. I'll go back to my timeline. And I'll have the Dark Magician be off. So Dark Magician pose. I'll add that as an activation track as well. And I'll have this be on, like so. And I'll say it doesn't turn on till then. And then I'll have the Dark Magician actually turned off. And then when I play, press this button, the summon button, things will happen. So let's go ahead and try that out. And so before we actually do that, we have everything set up, right? And so before we actually do that, we want to turn off play on awake. And then after we do that, I'll go ahead, click save. And I'll go and let's test it out. So now nothing happens. But when I click summon monster, we have our summon monster. Then we have the attack. And we have the defense mode. Like that. And so now let's do another timeline. And so what I'll do is I'll create another empty. So I'll create another empty. This one's going to be with draw timeline. So I'll call this one summon timeline. And then we have a withdraw timeline. I'll create the timeline animation, withdraw timeline, set this one to 24 frames per second. And then what I'll have is I'll have my Dark Magician on. And what I'll do is I'll have this locked, bring my Dark Magician pose down, create an activation track. Then I'll bring it down again, have an animation track. And then I will add my Dark Magic Aura to it right here. And so the dark magic aura, actually I'll, I'll create a control track first, and then I'll add the dark magic aura to it like that. And what I'll do is I'll have the activation at the end be like this, and then I'm going to animate it down. So we'll start off with the dark magician, the rotation, position and scale. I'll add keys to that and then what I'll do is I will just make it smaller. First I'll just rotate it. So I'll rotate it back and then I'll make it smaller like that and then it'll be the end of that. And so what I could do is I could rotate this way and then
rotate that way. Like that. So now what I could do is I could go to the withdraw button and I'll actually stop recording right here. Go to withdraw button, click the on click, go to this withdraw, withdraw timeline, and then I'll select play like that. And so at the end, it'll have that. And then I go to the, my timeline. I'll have it at hold. And then I'll have it at play on, oh, turn off play on awake. And I'll click that. So now let's go ahead and try the withdraw button. So we have this here, hit the withdraw button. Then hit the summon button. It looks like the withdraw button isn't turning off. And so I'll go through and I'll, I'll fix that real quick. So we'll go through. We have it on, I have it on none for that. And then I'll have it on none for that one as well. And so I'll, I'll give it a shot now. And so I'll turn off the Dark, dark Magician and I'll say, okay, let's play. First, summon, then withdraw, summon, withdraw. There's no battle or anything that shows up, but if I summon it, then go to battle, dark magic attack, and then defense mode, like that. So, so far it's coming along very nicely. And so remember I had this, uh, there's this fire shield, so I'll say shield that we downloaded. We have a magic shield and a fire shield. And so what we could do is I could add these to my, my stuff and I could add it actually to my uh, actual character. So what I'll do is I'll create another empty called VFX or battle FX. And I'll use the battle FX for this. And I could say, I have a magic shield. So let's see what the magic shield does. So they have the magic shield for that. That's interesting. See if I can scroll it down. So I'll play, that's the play. So, huh, that would actually be pretty cool. If I could get it down as, as low as possible for this. So let's play it again. That would be really cool. Oh, wow. So we'll say that's 0.3. So if I zero, if I turn this back to 1, 1, 1, and I have this be 0 0.003, 0 0.003, 0 0.003, 0 0 0.003, and I play this again. Yep, that's the size that I want. And so then I can try it with Fire Shield. Yep. And what about Magic Shield? What does that look like? Oh no, I don't really care about that one. Magic Shield 3, okay. So that was cool. Um, what about Magic Shield 1? Actually, I might want that for my battle effects. So I'll, I'll call this one Shield Effects. And then I'll make another one. I'll just duplicate it. And I'll call this one uh, Attack Effects. 
because I want this all to be the same size. And what I'll do is I'll have this magic shield loop. I'll have this one be for my uh, different effect attacks. So for the attacks, that's what I want this one to be. And so I have a magic shield for that. And so what I'll do is I'll just use this as a a good reference for one of my attack particles. So I'll just use this one. And then from there, have this one turned on. Do, do, do. Set that up for that. Uh, actually, I'll s stop that one. Perfect. Have the shield. I don't want this magic shield. I actually want the magic shield three, I believe. Yeah, I want the magic shield three, not the magic shield two. And then magic shield four, let's see what that one is. Hmm, interesting. But I'll keep this one on. And so what I'll do is I have my animations already. And so I have my attack. What I'll need is just another a projectile. So if I have this projectile one, that's uh, that was okay. Let's see if let's take a look at the projectiles that we have. And so for the projectiles that I have, I'll go through to the standard ones and the full particles. Let's see the standard ones that I have. I'll click OK. So it doesn't really give me the information that I want from it. So I'll just test them all in my in my other scene that I have. So I'll just test them in my dark magician scene. And so under attack effects, I'll say projectile. And so I'll say this is uh under the Hovel Studio, Bundles, Prefabs, and then we'll say Projectiles, and Projectiles with Transforms, and I'll just go through and see which ones work. It's no, Projectile 8, no, 2, what it looks like is I'll actually need to get the the other ones with the particle trails. This one, no. I'll go to 22, see if 22 is one. Huh, that could work. Turn off the gizmo so I could see them. So that's a cool pro projectile. Uh, not really. I like the 19 one, so yeah, I'll go with 19. Like that. So I'll have this one and then this coming out of it. So let's give it a shot. That so I could bring this forward. And then go from there like that and so what I'll do is I'll go through and I will create a a new modification to my animation so I have my attack animator 
until the attack animator is actually just the spell cast. So then I'll go through and I'll go to animation and animation window. And what the animation window will allow me to do, the animation window will allow me to select the animation that I have, spellcaster animation. What I'll do is I can essentially create or duplicate this. So I'll duplicate it and I'll call this uh, essentially dark magician. So DMG underscore animation. And so I have, I'm able to create a new animation right here. Then in my animator, I could actually swap it. So instead of it magic spell cast, I'll have DMG magic spell cast. And it's essentially just the, a duplicate of that animation. And so now what I could go through now is because I have these, this attack effects in my, uh, under my dark magician and it has all the stuff that I need in it, the transforms and everything, I could actually go through and add a new property to it. So I could go in and right now it's saying read only, but what I want is I want this DMG spell casting. So I'll go here. So before I get started, what I'll do is I will actually get rid of the magic shield and I'll just have just one projectile. So I'll just have one projectile coming out and then I'll just have my shield with this popping up and this popping up. So I have two different things happening. So first I'll just turn off my shield effects and with my shield effects turned off, I'll focus on the projectile. And so that's the projectile that I want. And so because I have it as a child of my dark magician, I'll be able to add it to any animations that it has. And so after first, what I did is uh, to, re to review, I just duplicated this uh this dark magic spell the magic spell and i called it dmg spell and then i added it to my animator attack so dmg spell is this one right here and so it's just a duplicate of it and so now i could go to my animation window which again goes to animation and then animation and i could choose in this drop down menu i could choose uh the different properties and so right now i have this So I have my idol, but I could go down and I could choose DMG spellcasting. And with DMG spellcasting, what I'll do is I'll add a property. And this property will be attack and then projectile like that. And so I'll turn that to active. And so what I'll do is I will actually turn it off. So it's not active. And then what I'll do is I'll go to when he fires like that. And I'll turn that to active like that. And so at that point, he's going to fire it. So what I'll do is I'll click save and we'll just go ahead and give it a shot. So as you can see, it's going. So what I'll do is I'll click dark magic attack. And he fires just like that. And it goes out into space. Perfect. So we have that going. And what I'll do is because I don't want it to linger too much, I'll go and I'll modify it so I have my dark magic attacks. I'll just have that be, I'll just keep that off. So the projectile will be off. And it'll continue to be off until otherwise. Now with this, we'll, we'll turn this off at the end like that. So it's off, on, and then back off. And so now what we could do is we could do that with the, the shield. So you'll notice that the, 
the standing block idle is read only. And so in order to change that, what we'll need to do is we'll need to go to the, I think this is the standing block idle right here. And so I'll just duplicate that and I'll just rename it DMG for Dark Magician. And so DMG underscore standing rock idle. And then I'll go to my animator, I'll go to defense and I'll just replace it with DMG standing block idle. And then what I'll do is I'll go to my animation window. And now what I have is I have, uh, I have a dark magician and then he has the standing block idle right here. And so standing block idle, I'll go to add properties and then I could go to shield effects. So I'll start off with my, not my fire shield, but I'll have my uh, magic shield here. And so I'll just set that to active first. And then I'll go ahead and add my, add my fire shield to it. So go to the fire shield and then I'll set that to active. And so what I do is I'll first start off with both of them off and then I'll go down the timeline and I'll have one turn on. So I'll have the first one be my magic shield. That'll turn on. And then later on, I'll have my fire shield turn on like that. And so by the end of it, what I'll have is I'll have my fire shield turn off and I'll turn this off and then my other shield will be turned on like that. So now let's go ahead and save it and give it a shot. So defense mode and that. And for some reason it did not turn on, unfortunately. Oh, and it's because I didn't turn my shield effects back on. Okay, so shield effects are on, uh, attack effects are on. What I'll do is I will actually turn off the projectile and turn off my magic and turn off my shield and those will be called on when you press the buttons and so then I'll press play and so I have my withdraw I have my summon when I go to battle defense mode and I have projectile like that. So let's actually modify the defense mode so that it actually plays more of it. So it'll play the whole thing is what I want. I want it to play the whole thing. So I'll go to my DMG blocking. So I guess it just plays, doesn't play as much. And so I'll have this play at the end. Turn that on. And then I'll have this one play like that. Actually, I could just take both of these. And it could just, it could just stay playing on. And then with this, want that off. And so, yeah, all we're gonna do is just be playing around with it a little bit. And then as I play it, right, I'll test it out. Like that. Then we have a summon, we have a withdraw. Summon it, 
as you can see here, got the summons. Then we have a defense mode. Dark magic attack. And there we go. So now it's time to add some sounds to this. And so we're going to add some audio effects and some sounds to make the uh, augmented card more immersive. And so we're going to have like a halos and just really just adding sounds to uh, make it feel a little bit more uh, impactful. And so that's what we're going to do now. So what we'll do is we'll go to the asset store and I'll just say uh, projectile sounds. And so I'll go through, we'll see what sort of sounds we could get our hands on. Uh, so we got shooting sounds here. We got magic, we got crossbows, we got all that. So we'll go ahead and accept this, add these sounds. And we'll open the Unity. And we'll download them. Import them. Import, just like that. And what I'll do is, uh, for it, I'll create a, in my AR content, what I'll do is I'll create a new empty object. And I'll call it audio manager. I'll call it audio manager one underscore one. And with that, I'll add an audio component. So audio source. And then I'll go to the summon. Uh, my summon timeline. And I'll actually go back to timelines. I'll have my summon timeline. I'll add the audio manager as an audio track and the withdraw timeline. I'll do the same thing. Audio manager as an audio track. And then I'll go to my sounds, so shooting sounds. And this is where I could preview my sounds. So I have what, laser. I got magic. Got this magic here. And so what I'll do is I'll just add this magic here. And I could actually stretch it out and make it last a little bit longer. So now, pretty trippy. And so that works for the summon. And what I could do is I could do a, some, a similar one for this one. So just stretch it out. Like that. <laughs> and those are our two sounds for summon and our our hide or summon in the withdrawal. So now what I could do is I could have a sound for each one of the the shield and the and the particle effects. And so in order to do that, I could actually go to my uh, shield. I could actually go to my like my canvas buttons actually. And so I'll go to my canvas buttons and I'll say battle and attack. And I could go through and I could choose adding an extra variable or function. And I'll add the audio manager like that, audio source. And I could play a, I could play an audio clip. And I could go to defense mode and I could do the same thing. I could add my audio manager there audio source and I could play a one shot audio clip. And so what this allows me to do is I could just actually just drag and drop an audio clip in there uh, to play a one shot. And so I'll go through and I'll test out the different audio clips. like that. And so 
The only problem about this, and what I, I could actually do this with the defense mode, so what I'll do with the defense mode is I'll actually play this Magic 3 audio clip. And that works, but it probably won't work for this because the time won't sync up. I actually might not add a uh, an attack sound to this attack. What I could do is I have all the stuff that I need, right? So I have my attack animation, my defense. I have the sounds for the defense set up here. For the magic, I have the withdraw timeline and the the a summon timeline. They both have sounds and let's go ahead and just play around just play this out and see how it works. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and click play and we'll test out the experience. So as you can see, here he is. Withdraw. And I'll click summon. Go to defense mode. And it's saying audio clip. And so if I go through and figure out what's going on with that. So I'll click play just to stop it and I'll go to my attack button and you'll see I still have this audio clip here and I had I added this earlier on but I decided not to have this in so we're not going to do that and we're not going to have an attack button to play and so I only have one audio manager which is this one right here and so I'll go ahead and click play again and actually I'll make a modification to the uh, animations that I have. And so I'll go out with Dark Magician. I'll go all the way down to uh, Magic Spellcasting. Actually, I'll go down to Block Idol. And for this one, the Fire Stand, I actually want this to actually turn off after, we'll say, five seconds. So I'll have it turn off after five seconds, like that. And so that saves into our animation. And then what I want is for the Dark Magician pose to actually be turned off as well. And so we'll activate the Dark Magician with the uh, summon in the timeline, or summon in the withdrawal. And so what we'll do is we'll save it. And so let's, let's go ahead and give it a shot now. So I'll go ahead and click play. So I'll go ahead and click summon. And I summon my monster, and then I have it do an attack. And then after that, I have it go into defense mode. And then I'll withdraw it. Like that. And so that worked out. And so now, the last thing that I want to do is I want to spruce it up a little bit. And so I want to have to where when the summon takes place, it'll actually uh, add the names and stuff to it as well. And so I want the nameplate and the tag plate, pretty much the nameplate to show up uh, as well. And so what I'll do with this is I will actually go to my Dark Magician card. And when it's found, I want the nameplate to occur and so since it's a since it's a sprite i'll have it i'll have it sort of exist and so what i'll say is actually not just the nameplate but the whole ui ui canvas of the whole ui canvas appearing and so i'll have ui canvas i'll set the game act object to active and i'll set that to active and then for the game object for this the bool, I'll set that to inactive when the target is lost, when the target is found. And so what I'll have now is when I actually summon one of the monsters, I'll have the nameplate. And so I'll have the nameplate activate. So activation track for the nameplate. And then 
for the withdrawal, for the summoning and the withdrawal, I'll actually have this turn off. So I'll have the activation track and I'll have it turn off halfway. So after a certain amount of time. I'll have the nameplate. And so now I have the summon, I have my nameplate, and then uh, and that turns on. So I'll have that turn on after one second. And as you can see, the nameplate turns on. And then for the withdrawal, I'll have the nameplate turn off like that. And so last thing is I will have the UI canvas actually turn that off from the start and it'll turn back on when I have my uh, information and so there's an error that I have and so I'll just actually go ahead and change this error so there's an error with the spell cast and I have this event here I'll just turn take this event off and there's an event here as well I'll take that off as well and so that's what those errors from the console were. And so now let's go ahead and give this a shot now. So nothing should be on. So nothing is on, as you can see, then it recognizes. And then what I'll do is I'll, and but notice the dark magician is showing already. So what I'll do is I'll actually, I'll turn that off automatically. So I'll just turn off the nameplate. And so that'll, that'll turn on when I uh, click play. And so the indicator that the card is recognized will be uh, from the UI canvas turning on. And then the nameplate turning on is what's going to uh, be set forth by this. So I have the nameplate turned off right now. I'll just click the static on that one. And then when it turns on, you'll see how when it goes to active, the nameplate turns active. And so there you go. So now let's play around with this and turn it on and try it out. So here we go. It recognizes, as we see here, we have a summon, some monster. And then Dark Magician turns on. And then we have our withdraw. And the nameplate turns it off. So we'll summon it. And then we could go to battle. And we got a battle and a defense mode like that. And what we could do is how about when we summon it, we could when we summon it, it turns on the battle as well as the Dark Magician. So that's what we'll do. And so I'll withdraw it and I'll click the stop sign right here, the non-play button, and I'll say with the battle buttons, I'll turn the, hmm, let's see, it would have to be the toggle that I want to change. And so with the toggle, I'll turn the toggle off. So activation track and this will turn off. And then I'll have in the summons, I'll have the battle toggle and the activation track here. And I will turn this on, make it active and stuff. And so now, here we go, we'll give it a shot. So nothing's showing up, recognizes it, boom, but it's still showing the battle. So let's see why this is doing that. Uh, and I think it's because I need to turn off the battle toggle. There we go. So I need to turn that off first. And so now let's give it a shot again. So looking down, it only shows one thing. So it says summon monster or withdraw. So I'll say summon monster like that. And then the battle appears, dark magician and battle, dark magic attack, fire something, and then it goes to defensive mode. 
like that. Until then, I could go to Withdraw Monster, and it takes away all the stuff. Nothing else is available but being able to summon more monsters. Like that. That dark magic attack. Just like that. I'll withdraw again. And there we have it. That is our AR playing card right there. And so an activity that we could do is we could expand on what we already did, right? Uh, with all the steps that we followed, we can expand on the experience by making the experience more seamless and really replicate what we saw on the Yu-Gi-Oh! video. And so by adding more attacks to your characters and uh, enhancing it, it makes things much wonderful. And so what I'll do is I'll connect uh, certain elements to the experience that are better by, you know, appearing things when things are recognized. And, I, and I'll go through how I would navigate that. But for you, feel free to uh, add new menu buttons, add new animations, add new sounds, add new effects. There's a lot of stuff that you could do with this to really enhance the experience and, and really make it feel like you're in the TV show. And I think the beauty of that with augmented reality is it allows you to do that. So looking down, it only shows one thing. So it says summon monster or withdraw. So I'll say summon monster like that. And then the battle appears, dark magician and battle, dark magic attack, fire something, and then it goes to defensive mode. Like that. And so then I could go to withdraw monster and it takes away all the stuff. Nothing else is available but being able to summon more monsters. Like that. That dark magic attack. Just like that. I'll withdraw again. And so as we wrap up this course, right, uh, we explored a lot of stuff. We explored, you know, my, my childhood favorite cartoon and, and card game. We also explored the power of augmented reality, being able to turn a normal playing card into something from an anime show, and exploring Unity for creating AR experiences. We looked at a lot of user interface stuff and how to experience things with the AR, and then ultimately how to bring physical art to life with animation, visual effects, and sound. And so we did a lot of stuff and it was a really a jam packed session. And I'm glad that I was able to take you down my, uh, my workflow of how I create things and really explore something that's really experimental, but, uh, allows for you to have a, a really good time. And so again, my name is Steven Christian. I am a immersive artist. I create comics and cartoons that really allow for people to be empowered, uh, entertained and engaged. And it's, it's been a wonderful journey teaching you uh, this lovely little project. And hopefully you're able to create some awesome stuff based off of it. And again, my name is Stephen Christian. And I hope to see you in another fun-filled tutorial about combining art and technology. Okay. Adios.